record. Hello, this is my friend Micah from my group. He's a, a Finnish gentleman uh, that uh, I've been getting to know for the last month and a half. And uh, he's, a, he's a brilliant man. He's, a, I believe, a clarinet teacher. And uh, we've had some great conversations. And we decided to expand on that and do a one on one here. And uh, I'm honored to uh, introduce everybody to Micah. Uh, Micah, how do you pronounce your last name? No, it's it's Ruhta. Ruhta. And and the yeah, and the and the first name is actually it's Mika. Mika. I was yes. wondering. I was going to ask you if that was yeah, but uh, Ruhta. Yeah, definitely yeah. Viking. That's uh, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, Yes, I was actually named after some pretty, uh, pretty prevalent uh, Vikings. My uh, my first name uh, or my middle name is Eric, and uh, everybody's called me Eric all my life. But I've used Howard for business purposes and everything on Facebook and some of the last jobs I've had and stuff. But uh, yeah, I was named for Eric the Red and uh, uh, Leif Erikson, and uh, my my family comes from that area. Um, I'm French German by, uh, you know, but uh, yeah, I have a lot of roots in that area. I'm glad to meet you. And uh, I would like to uh, just open the floor and find out what you want to talk about. What, what are, what, what are the subjects that most interest you? No, I'm quite open to just to talk. It's, it's, I, I like easy, easy going so, somehow to, like that this like to think that this all is like just storytelling and take it easy just it's just storytelling and not so serious and and you you cannot get it right and you cannot get it wrong but it's it's nice to some somehow talk around things i i in, in some way a story being a good storyteller or uh, even being able to enjoy a story is something of a currency to me. Um, I think that that is the true gold that we have, uh, you know, in, in some respects here, here, uh, because um, in, in so far as communication, we're all just telling each other stories, are we not? I mean, do we actually, you know, know anything definitively? Or are we just telling things from our from from our own perspective, and we're just kind of uh, you know telling stories about what seems to be occurring? And, and uh, I'm actually I'm actually have had a course with like one and a half year about like storytelling. Oh yeah, like, yeah, like like how to how to make like how to teach with stories and. And uh, and how to uh, what the stories are and and how to how to tell stories with pictures and how to tell stories with movement and how to tell stories with music and so on and so on. Oh, you just gave me uh, you just reminded me of the story you told last week. Uh, please tell it again. I know it's not too it's it's not a long one, but it was it was beautiful. Uh, the grandfather. And the uh, child that came in yes. for the lesson. Yeah, it, it was actually it was first lesson. There was father, father, and the the girl was very good in the audition. He she was singing very beautifully, but but she was very small. And when she when she tried tried to get a sound from the instrument, and she was trying and trying and there was nothing coming out and i was already a little worried that did i take did i took someone too small mm. but but then i said that maybe maybe the father could try that how how is he succeeding and and he got the sound and then i said to the to the father that father knows the daughter better that how would you teach to your daughter that how to make the sound and it, it made the whole situation more relaxed and 
And now it, she's playing like an angel, like after one and one or two months. And it, it, oh, it has been it has been really fun. Like the whole family is so supporting. That first time there was father with the daughter, and next time there was mother. And ah. then next time there was grandmother, and I was starting to joke like, like when when does the grandfather come? That I want to get to know the whole family. And then was after maybe one week there was the grandfather. That now now you have seen all of us. Well, I love the uh, the part where uh, <clears throat> she couldn't get a noise out of it, and. Um, you just you gave it to her father and said see if you can you told him how to do it and then uh he got a noise out of it and then he said now and then you said now tell your daughter how you got the noise out of it and then she listened and then she got the noise out of it and then they were both yeah i mean that that, that to me that was that was amazing i love that story and uh, what a brilliant little uh piece of teaching if i'm uh, you know if i may say that that was very very clever have you been a teacher long? No, like uh, over over twenty years. Oh, really? Yeah. Have you? Uh, I mean, is it something that you study up on? Is it just natural? Do you, do you study on other teachers and techniques? No, it's the teaching part is like like I my whole family. Like my mom, my mother used to be a teacher and. And there are my aunts are teachers and so on. So the 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 uh, studying was just for playing. Like the, when I studied music, it was just for playing, and the, they didn't really teach how to how to teach. Not 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 in the well good way, but but it was like uh, the it has just been like. Uh, just, just some something to e examine that how how does it work, and uh, and quite often quite often there is like too too much trying like someone can think that people are not trying but but there is often like no maybe like too much trying to do it. Yeah, it's a um, another clarinet story. Uh, I think it was a Richard Dreyfus movie where. Uh, the uh, young girl could not get it, and and from what I understand, clarinet is not easy uh, to to get a sound out of it, a, a, a clean one, anyways, uh, a smooth sound. So, anyways, the little girl uh, could not uh, could not get it together, and Richard Dreyfus, uh, the teacher, said, "Okay, let's stop here. Let's just wait a second. And why don't you tell me about yourself? What do you what do you love the most about your life? And she says, "Well, I love my dad." And uh, he says, "Well, what do you love about your dad?" And she says, uh, "Well, we we always you know we take walks in the park and we always talk." And he says, "He loves my hair." And she was a redhead. And uh, he goes, "Well, what does he say about your hair?" And she says, "It reminds him of the sunset." And um, and he tells her to play the sunset. And then, and suddenly she was able to get that note that she couldn't get. And um, she plays this, and then she, and then he said, just continue on like, you know, she was so excited, she almost stopped. He's like, no, 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 just keep playing the sunset. And so from that on, from that point on, she was able to move past that barrier in the lesson that she couldn't get. And uh, it re your story reminded me of that. I, I, you know, it was very, very good, very good. Uh, teaching shouldn't be just about curriculum, should it? I mean, it shouldn't just be about um, getting the student on the curriculum rather than, um, you know, having having the student kind of merge with the curriculum somehow, somehow get it, but get it in, you know, in any way that they can. Yes, and I think the motivation is often also a problem that how to get the motivation that you you can't like uh, <clears throat> order order the motivation that that but but some somehow if there is like fun and but but this it also 
it depends from the support of the family like this this family that i was talking about it's so so fun there is they are all like storytellers because the like there was the grandfather also was saying like because the girl was so so small saying that that i'm going to buy two little bottles of lemonade that you started to lift those bottles and then the girl girl was as clever and was thinking that we must buy the bad tasting one because the uh, uh, big brother is otherwise going to drink those bottles <laughs> i miss you okay so what was this now the, um what was this about lemonade uh, well, it was like the grandfather was saying that was trying to in, encourage the girl that you should start to uh, lift some weights. To oh, get lift weights. More, yeah, to get more strength. And and like like I'm going to buy some bottles of lemonade that let's start. With those <laughs> like you, you start to lift those that at the beginning and the, right. the girl was as as clever and was thinking that we must buy the bad tasting ones because the big brother is otherwise going to drink immediately yeah, just, yeah, yeah the ways the ways will get lighter <laughs> like like the, you you can make it a problem that you are so small and you must grow and be bigger but you can also like make it in the fun way yeah like, like how, how to how to get more strength Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I, you know, you're talking about family support and I was, you know, I was thinking about like, uh, just in, just in regular, uh, you know, uh, regular activities of the children, but, uh, you get into, uh, professionals. I was thinking, uh, about, uh, oh, um, the swimmer. Uh, that got all the gold medals the last time in the Olympics. I, as, soon, as soon as I brought, I bring his name up, uh, I forgot it. But, uh, it just slipped my mind. But anyways, he was saying that he couldn't, he had to go into the pool every morning, like five, six in the morning, you got to jump in the pool. And uh, it's cold. Every morning you wake up to this freezing cold pool for years. <laughs> And he goes, now I finally, you know, I, I win all these gold medals and everybody wants me to do it again next, you know, next, the next time. And he goes, do you realize how many times my dad had to throw me in the pool to get me? It's like, it's brutal. You know, you're talking, you know, six, seven days a week. And uh, he goes, I've been looking forward to not being, not having to do that. Cause that's what you had to do. He says, I, I, I would have to start training now. And um, that's every day from now until I compete. You know, I'm going to be jumping into a freezing cold pool. But it's the same thing with weight training or, or any other kind of thing that you want to do. You have to have that motivation ultimately and support, I think. You know, there are some that don't have support and make it, but you don't hear about much of them. You have people that are dedicated, but don't have the support or the teachers and um you know they might get up every day but you'll never hear from them or hear about them because they just don't have the opportunity or um you know nobody ever knows about them or gives them a shot or uh it just could be that um sometimes as an athlete or anything as a musician or or anything if you you can have the skill and the talent and the ability the drive the motivation but um yeah if you don't if you don't have the proper channels open to you um, you'll never, you, you'll never get found out. You know, you'll never know what to do. But, you know, if you don't have a good teacher, you don't know what your next move should be. So you could all that, all that training and all that effort will turn to naught. You know, and uh, yeah, it's 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 interesting, an interesting commentary about uh, support. So what, what, what did you, uh, what did you, uh, set out to do when you just decided to, uh, play the clarinet? Did you start when you were a kid? Uh, yes, I, I started, but it was also 
No, I, I don't know. It, it was just something that I, I just continued and continued. And, and finally, like I, I was interested in other subjects, but, but it's, it was also like they were maybe even more unpractical. So it was something that I was quite interested in and I was I knew that there is some opportunities to get a job also. So it, it, it's just like something that you continue. No, it's, it's, it has been fun, like fun with play, play with nice people and, and there has been interesting teachers. Actually, one teacher was very interesting, came from States. He was from Juilliard School, famous famous school he was one year like visiting professor and it was interesting that he had made also degree from uh, anthropology from Yale University so it was he had like this kind, kind of uh, uh, no, this kind of uh, intelligent way of putting th things like like new new aspects for for playing and life and all those things kind of so like it, that it, book please go ahead i'm sorry no 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 oh, i was going to i was going to say it's, it's like that book no. uh, zen and small motor repair or uh, yeah. motorcycle yeah <laughs> it's like uh, so we as you were growing when did you get in uh interested in non duality for example how does that i mean is there a that story there been, yeah that, that, that has been like around long time like like they, they they was i have heard stories that often people that get interested in uh, non-duality there is some trauma trauma history or something that they was like my father died when i was children and and child and about like 10 years old and like like they was like dead and my brother has was very uh, sick when he was child, like when, when I was like five years old. So all those things like comes and there was, I was interested about like literature, like there is some, some uh, writers like Hermann Hesse is writing something, not like non-duality, but, but something, around that like he has had like books like Siddhartha and those about like Buddhism and and around that thing and then then I was like seeking like 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 uh, also, also in the when I was studying I was when I was like 30 years ago I was in 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 uh, my my twenties, there was these these guys like Krishna Murti, Yitu Krishna Murti, and UJ Krishna Murti, and also Nisargadatta and Ramana Maharshi, and 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 some somehow I, I was like looking some kind of answers there, but I I can't hear you. Is there problem with the connection now. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I can't see you, but I can hear you now. Was there some problem with the connection? Yes, sir. Um, hang on one second. Yeah, I had gotten a phone call and um, it was from a medical facility and I'll get back to them later, but I screened the call and suddenly you got muted. Um, so I didn't want to be disrespectful there. I'm sorry. Um, where, where did we leave off? I think, um, yes, you were, you were talking about, uh, we, well, we were talking about non-duality and, and grief and uh, you know how uh, you were 10 years old, your father, fell ill no my father died 
like my father got cancer and died to cancer and, yes. and earlier my my brother was when I was like five years old my brother was very sick and but had a lot of issues but but he 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 didn't die but he still have some complications because of that and uh, and then there was those kind kinds of things it's like the this uh, little bit like this buddha story that when you see like aging and illness and and death and all those things that then you maybe start to reflect life that what is the what is the meaning of all things yes like, uh, i think like like the there was the richard sylvester and this uh dom garland who are dom garland is is his uh, partner and he she has been she's also a therapist and she w once was uh talking about these things like they there has been some research about the thing that people often that get interested about these things that they have had some trauma history or some something like they they start to like they they they, they don't they don't anymore find life satisfying as it is that they, they are like trying to seek something beyond the the like seeing world Yes, did um, so so. I know. I had a similar story with with myself when I was eight and my father, and uh, my father fell ill and ultimately died, um, uh, you know, complications of heart attacks and strokes, and uh, various different cancers. It got ugly, you know. It was brutal in the end, um, and I know that. You know, it's impossible to say that that doesn't uh, affect a kid. You know, uh, but uh, I had very a very similar story, and I was just wondering, uh, could you expand on that? Like, did you're you're saying that 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 kind of pushed you, or 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 maybe had you look for kind of meaning, or were you looking for something specifically to fill? You know the questions: Why, why suffering, and all this? Did you look into Zen, for example, first, or? No, I was looking like from the, like the like uh, literature, like the writers of the who had have similar like reflections about life. Like there is this Swiss writer Hermann Hesse that he has. Yes, uh, thought similar things, and 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 then they they was also like other they was like like coming new and new things like there is they are they are already they there is like over generational traumas like like my in my mother's family the oldest brother died in the war and and they were like farmers and they was supposed to like the oldest brother will take care of the whole thing that 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 it was devastating for for them in those times and and also like oh, my father had had like difficult childhood and 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 then there was these kind of things like a little bullying in school and all the, the, these things and then you like start to feel like maybe a little like outcast or or trying to find some kind of meaning for all things yes. sa satisfying meaning but it, yes. it's difficult to say that yeah so, something like that yes um i know that uh immediate experience is it, there's something to be said about truly living in the moment um in, in a in a situation of war or pain uh it could be or you know or joy or um just the mundane um but yes i could see how the trauma draws you in uh to ultimately 
I think what uh, uh, I found uh, with with non duality in the most hideous of uh, situations, the the you can look at immediate experience as uh, it, it's almost as the infinite feels as if it is confined in that one little moment. And, you know, there's no, it's, it's not that there is an eternity out and about and beyond your reach, but the, the, the infinite is in this moment in that you couldn't explain it if you tried. Um, you couldn't explain it if you had an, an infinite amount of time, you could never explain each moment and sometimes the moments of grief or grief or terror um you know life uh threatening situations or just losing relatives things of that nature um there are just different flashes different different increments of time that can stay with you forever you know for you know the inconclusive amount of time it just never it never ends but um yeah the uh I know from, from my own experience, uh, when I see myself going into a surely uh, a painful situation, like I'm about to fall or I'm about to, uh, or something, you know, a wave's about to crash on me that I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get out from, or somebody's, you know, you're under attack in the army or something, or in the Navy, and something like that. Things, things are about to go really bad. Um, I can get into this place of peace and enjoy the moment as it is and just relax your body completely. And uh, up until now, um, that's worked for me in that you can relax and maybe get out of it somehow. But the, the issue would be for me, in most cases, do not, you know, don't fight what's about to happen. Um, but that's how non-duality kind of you know, resonated with me really early on before I even knew what it was um, in, in, in that you can be facing death with a smile on your face, just enjoying the moment before it's about to, you know, be th things are going to go bad, you know, and um, I don't know. What do, what do you think about that? No, I may be, no, I, I haven't been in that kind of, uh, situation but i can feel that like sometimes when there was like ultimate ultimate like sadness they they was like it was changing to the like in the same time they could be like ultimate so joy somehow mm -hmm. in, in like like with the grief like when the grief goes in in very deep then it, they might like like in the same time come like somehow the re relief like sudden relief that and you don't know what it is like maybe you you can then give it some explanation like if, if you are with the with the uh, christianity then you may think like like the christ was the savior or 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 if you are like buddhism like like the in in other other words but but some somehow if but it can be just the feeling like with the like if you just if you remain with the this grief or agony then it, it they, they might come something else I, I i'm not sure i'm just talking aloud that what comes and this is just like around the subjects and it, it's just it's just storytelling, but it's it's like fun. <laughs> yeah, well, and we, we, if we were doing this in Finnish, I would not be doing it as well as you are doing in English. But um, yeah, the the immediate experience insofar as grief, um, true grief, yes. Uh, I'll, I'll put it to you like this: um, a friend. Let's see. Uh, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were. Uh, I was saying that you can get the positive, uh, a, a positive out of every, um, of every story, 
And uh, he said, oh, are you sure about that? And I said, I'm pretty sure. And um, he, he was saying, he goes, okay, well, how about X, Y, and Z? Came up with all these horrific, terrible stories. Well, you, you know, you would rather be dead than to be that way. And I said, oh, well, I don't, I don't know. Are you sure? Like, if you can know at that moment where, you know, this horrific story X, Y, and Z was happening, this, you know, people say, I'd rather be dead, you know? Well, I don't know about that. If you could go, if you could look into your last breath, look into the last moment of your life. And as you see that story flash in front of your eyes, even the worst moments of your life, the most agonizing pain, whether it be psychological, mental, uh, you know, physical, um, you know, just, just, you know, whatever it is, you know, loss of love, all of this. Um, and you knew you were about to expire would you not take any moment in your life and go right back to it and 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 rather experience that excruciation um i don't know you know but i have been in situations where my life has flashed before my eyes and all of it is preferable <laughs> you know i mean but even that and then and, and in some way um, even that, the, you know, being able to see the good and the bad, um, in the bad, you know, no matter, no matter how bad it is, um, there's beauty in it because you would rather be that than to have it taken. And, um, you know, some people, you know, will, will argue suicide, you know, they'll say, well, some people take their lives and you know what? yes there's that but i don't get that i think um suicide is um you know for all it, it just just to be loose with language um a permanent solution to a temporary problem um but uh you know that's not a very non-dual message but it's but that's it, it you know with loose language that's the way i feel about it and um we're it, it, this is over so fast and all the all those little infinite moments within this little finite appearance of a happening, uh, it's it's just you don't you don't have to look at it, um, you know. It, 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 even the even the worst moment, you you you'll take that before extermination, and um, in that way, it's positive. Um, so I try to look at it like that, even when, you know, I'm going through what appears to be hell and, um, much of, uh, what I realize about the grief of the world, the suffering of the world is the idea of suffering outside of immediate experience. It is the fear of it. It's the, um, the stories of, you know, the stories of horror and war and suffering and pain and death. Um, I always liked what the Buddha says, uh, you know, in, in, in his own little way, I, it's, it's, it's not correct, but it's, it's close. It's, um, as everything is, you know, um, not entirely correct, but, uh, uh, if you cannot accept, uh, that there will be war and injustice and death and starvation and you know famine flood and all of that um forever then you will never get to nirvana now that not might not be you know buddhism across the board but i have heard that and i loved it as soon as i heard that i said okay you know i can understand that i understood that right away because there you can't change it you know, you can't want to change it in an immediate experience. In, in the want of changing it, you, you actually uh, contract it. You bring it to yourself. You bring it to the immediate experience because you, um, in some way, uh, are saying you are unhappy. So you're bringing the unhappiness into your, into your world. Whereas what I traditionally 
uh, had to deal with is, you know, with med medical issues, as everybody does, your pains, your sorrows, all that kind of thing. Um, but the physical pain and uh, the, you know, stress and the sufferings of life uh, don't seem so terrible to me. Uh, you know, even when things are really bad, I can, I can, because I don't want to change it. You know, it's, you don't want to just, and for the lack of, uh, for the lack of uh, wanting to influence anything, um, comes this kind of a, uh, uh, mutual or uh, blending and, and the pain, your, your own pain can, will seem to dissipate uh, because you don't want to change what's happening. You're, you know, it's not even that you're grateful or, or you're angry. You're just in it. You know, this is happening and I am here as I appear in this, you know, we cannot, the, the funniest thing is, is that it's not a reality for as reality is traditionally understood. Words have to be kind of reinvented because that you words are duplicitous in what you're talking about, or in insofar as non-duality, it, it's not duplicitous, and 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 so, in that non-dual sense, you have to take words by their duplicitous na nature and use them in their opposites. Like you have to say, happening not happening, true not true, or it's it's, it's true and false, or it's yes and no, it is and it isn't you know, all of that kind of thing, but it's not happening. It's not one after another, you know, or like re revolving. It's simultaneous. It's true and not true. It's, you know, it's, it's, it's real and unreal. Um, you do and you do not exist. Existence itself does and does not exist, you know. So you, you, you have to reinvent words to talk about a lack of, of duplicity a lack of, um, you know, a lack of separation. And so um, for me- And it, it, also, it, it also goes like in the other way that in, in beauty, there is also sadness, like, like in, in like yes. Japanese have the, the cherry, cherry, this hanami, when cherry trees are blossoming. So yes. it's, it's the most beautiful time in the spring, but there is also sadness because it lasts only couple of days right right yeah lazu lazu said uh in, in the book of the way um uh, when there's beauty there's ugliness you know when there's love there's hate and when there's winter there's summer you know it's you you cannot love something without causing the negative to the other but in in you know it, i mean because that's just that frame of reference it's not that you're calling it something or another but it is that so instead of wanting something to change you want the immediate experience you know to, to not contain a world of uh of uh you know starvation and war and death and injustice and suffering well then don't want to change it and in the and in the lack of want to changing it it becomes what you wish because uh in fact, you know, that is the idea of a world of suffering. It's the idea of the want and the need and um, the desire. Uh, but that doesn't really actually happen. It's not actually happening right now. I mean, it just appears to be that. And, um, you know, you can come up with reasons or meanings or purposes for that, but that's not, you know, that, you know, that would negate what we're talking about. Just the simple being uh, a part of what is happening and what appears to be happening in an immediate experience um, makes it peaceful for all, for, for all of its uh, apparent, um, positives and negatives uh, you can make the uh you can make it uh, a beautiful thing you know because then ultimately now you're in a place where there is no suffering you know just what you think 
of as suffering or just what the appearance of you the appearance of the kid that was going through in my case eight years old when i watched my father go down you know and i to watch that uh as a kid i was i was just it was weird it was like seeing superman you know somehow meet his kryptonite you know and i was just like i, I couldn't believe it but you know, i've got my own stories about that but um the, the also the interesting thing about it was is that I saw it before it happened, you know, and um, for some reason I knew it was going to happen. And uh, I had told my mother about it and uh, it, it was I had had the shift and in the shift I had seen my father go down and I knew that he wouldn't die, but he was going to be out of my life for all intents and purposes. Now, this is a mind bender for a kid. Big, you know, pretty big time. I mean, you're looking at a situation where you have a premonition about your own dad getting sick and then it happens. And, uh, you know, on the one hand, you know, there is the actuality of my father being out of the picture and which brings about all kinds of, uh, you know, all kinds of things. But uh, then you have uh, the, the, the weird um, happening of of seeing it before it happened, and um, what do you make of that in in the immediate experience? You know, I mean, what you know, along with the suffering of my father, there is also the weird story of of it not really being as it appears, and. Um, the, the suffering uh, of, a, of a of a man that uh, was big, he was big and loud, and he loved to ski and play tennis and golf, and you know he was really involved with me and my brother, and had lots of friends, and he was just bigger than life. And to have that uh, to have that happen in that way uh, truly was. Uh, something that I can relate to with you. Uh, I mean, I don't know if it would be better if he had just, you know, died right there on the spot or to see him over the next 20 years, you know, whittle down to nothing. Uh, that was kind of tough too. Uh, and I never liked uh, doctors because of that. I never liked to go to hospitals after that. Uh, just, just because I just related it to my, my father being uh, whittled away to nothing. That was a rough one. That was hard. Uh, still is. Um, but, you know, what do you make of all of these stories? You know, right here and now, what can you do with it? You know, what, what can I learn from this? Um, you know, I, I wouldn't change anything in the world. I don't, you know. You know, I, I don't uh, wonder, like, you know, why, you know, or how, you know, why did this happen or something like that. For some reason, I know that that's not relevant. It is, the why is not relevant. And whatever my father's uh, plight was, was his own, you know, and it just, I was just glad to know him as long as I did. I was, I'm happy to be alive. Um, you were talking about war earlier. I'm a product of war two world wars, German and French uh, and American. And, uh, you know, my, my grandfather fought for the Kaiser uh, in World War I, came back, came to America with my brother, I mean, with, my, with his mother and my dad in tow. And then my dad went to fight uh, the Germans in World War II and met my mother in France. So I am a product of the, uh, of the same wars that I think you might have some uh, insight on being Finnish. Um, yeah, I think that uh, it, it's odd in that way that um, that we have so many similarities. I'm sorry that I rambled on. Um, no, it, 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 it was interesting that like, like um, we, we didn't fight in the first world war, but the Finland was the product of the first 
world war like there was we get the independence after that and there was very bloody civil war like at the beginning of the the this in the independence like and and also like the, there has been this this um <clears throat> tensions like finland was like sweden used to be like a, a superpower in the early days and Russian is a, used to be a superpower, so Finland was like between of the two superpowers, and they say like like Finnish way of communication is often that it, it has been said that Finnish are like communicating with different nuances of silence. Like you you cannot say like very uh, strongly how you. What is your op opinion? You have to like relate to the, uh, like keep your own opinion, but somehow be like relatable, like not not to like strong character or something like that. Yeah, well, that would be very very much like the Finnish national stance. Uh, you know, keep yourself, but you know, have an opinion. And if anybody messes with you, I mean. I I know I know a little about Finnish uh, history and I knew with Russia and, and all of that and I know that um, that it's not it, it's not easy to tell Finland what to do you can't access uh, Finland all that easily and the Finns know how how to live there and for you know to anybody for so for anybody to to come and occupy that territory uh, they would uh, definitely. You have to learn a lot about uh, their environment. Um, so I, I, I love that kind of stuff um, ab about, you know, about history, about cu cultures that, that refuse to be uh, indoctrinated into uh, whatever's going out or on around them. Uh, uh, Vietnam is a great example of that. Uh, they use the same kind of uh, techniques against the Mongol army uh, that they used against the American army and the French, you know, I mean, the, uh, uh, you know, the Chinese, uh, nobody has ever been able to tell those people what to do or how to do it, but uh, they're not necessarily, you know, they're, they're not saying that they're, they're not willing to talk. They're not willing to, you know, to be a part of the world. They're just saying they're not going to do what everybody tells them to do. You know, <laughs> all these superpowers keep trying to tell them what to do, and it, it just doesn't ever seem to work. <laughs> but yet, as soon as as soon as the war is over, uh, you go back to doing business with them, but on their terms, you know, uh, so or at least mutual terms. There's probably a lesson in that as well. Yeah. Finland must uh, must feel pretty good uh, about their situation. I know I would um, to be as small as you are, but to be as independent. But just the language alone is difficult. No, it's I don't know. It's no, it's because it's their own own language group. It it, it is like Finnish and Hungarian, but. And there is also in in Russian there are like smaller nations that are speaking this Finnish uh, kind of language, and sure. also like yeah, and in in Estonia they they was like also like when they was at at the when there was like this World War One there was this nationalistic ideas all around, and also like. Finnish had this idea of the like this great Finland, like like to occupy also the areas from Russian where there is like people speaking like Finnish languages. Like there was this like we are not in that way better than others that we have also this kind of nationalistic idea and not not realistic. Yeah, right. But it was. Yeah. 
but it it's it, it interesting like like it, it goes it was like about 100 years ago there was this idea that war is somehow noble and and it is like you you should be like you have this nation and you should be proud to fight for that nation and and somehow that was well, thought to be some, somehow beautiful i don't i don't i not i don't know exactly but i have read some books about the, well yeah i mean personally i joined the army or the navy on my uh, uh the armed forces uh, armed services on my 18th birthday and um so i i joined the, the the moment i could the day of my 18th birthday and uh the you know i mean there were several reasons for it but one of them was um i wanted to be able to say whatever i wanted to say i wanted to do my part so that when it came time to talk politics later in my life, you know, or to make a stand one way or another, I could have that, you know, as something for myself. I know that I served when when the time came, I did my duty and and put my two cents in and put my butt on the line, uh, you know. And honestly, you know, I, it was amazing how you that really does, you know, it, it, it comes into play. You you can die, you know, if you if you join the services, you can die, and uh, for your country, there's no doubt about it. So um, the thing about it is, is I I felt if I make it through this. Um, you know, you can disagree with what I what I say or what my opinions are, um, but I, I, you know, I, I know that I have the right to say them and feel them. Um, it's not necessarily that America <laughs> does the right thing at all times. It doesn't at all, and I know that. And uh, but it still it doesn't, you know, ultimately. Um, when you when you serve your country, you, you're basically saying for better or worse, um, I'm going to try to uh, to do what I can to make it better if I can, you know, or, or at least uh, keep it the way it is, you know, or, or whatever. I'm going to try to protect my countrymen or, you know, just do my part you know, in some little way. It doesn't have to be, it's nothing big and grand. It's a small little thing. You can, you can end up doing absolutely nothing, you know, uh, of, of consequence, uh, scraping bird crap off, <laughs> off a runway or something. It doesn't, you know, the, not everybody, you know, has to do something uh, uh, extravagant. And um, a lot of it isn't. It's very, it's not very, you know, grand at all. But um, it is what it is. You you know you you put your name, you step forward, you put your name on the line, you put your hand up, and then you do your duty, whatever that ends up having to be. And um, you know that alone is is all it is. Now you, whether you do something of consequence or or fight or just do paperwork or are you maintenance or a trash man, it doesn't really matter. That's not the point. Um, the point is is that. When when you took that oath and took that step forward and 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 signed, anything could happen at that point. You have given yourself to service, and that's the most important part. You know what happens after that. I call my six pack stories because you, know, you get a couple of beers in me, and I'll tell you all about it. We've had, it was amazing, but um, yeah, it was it was a uh, dangerous and sketchy. And uh, there, there are some, there's some touch and go moments there, but I'd never change it. And uh, so, anytime that I, politics get into the get into the question with me, if I feel it necessary to get into that conversation, or if I want to say something, I feel I have that right. And that's and the day I I step forward and, and put my name on the line, that was the day that I felt. I could I could talk to anybody about any position in regards to America, and uh, 
I've earned that right. And I think everybody that served has. But you don't have to serve to do that. You, you anybody can. You don't have to be a serviceman to talk politics in your own country. But uh, I think you know they, it's kind of one of those things. I have some some fairly. Um, I don't know. Sometimes I, I, you know, I used to be into politics, and um, you know, I had some pretty loud, <laughs> pretty loud ideas. So uh, you know. Uh, no matter what, I just, you know, whether you're on the left or the right or whatever your political views are, um, if you have served, um, you know, be, you know, I, I think um, that gives you a little extra credit, um, no matter how bizarre your ideas may be, you know, yeah. but there's limits uh, to everything. My, <laughs> yeah, my story is, is a little bit different that I was I was also we don't have to we don't have the uh, that like everybody are doing the service in in Finland and oh, I, I was like, like yeah you guys like, have mandatory mandatory service yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. and and then there was it it's like uh, I was like 19 years old you you if you get it's not that difficult that you have you can get the from like for, from the doctor paper that you are not suitable for the service but uh -huh. but the but but then like it's it's like what what was the word mandatory that everybody is is doing it but uh, like i was like quite nervous because i i had lived with but there was no no like male figures like I had lived with my mother and my aunts that they like how 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 it will be in the like this kind of manly situation like like you have to be like strong and this kind of oh kind of you were raised by the females in your family and you didn't know how you yeah. deal with yeah. how did that go how did that how did that turn out. Yeah, but it, it was like, it was quite okay. I, it, first, like I was quite nervous, but it was like at the end of the service, it was like 11 months. Like I, I was also playing in the military band. It was fun that there was one guy who left the band and I I went to the, like I was one year with the, like I get the job from, for from the military but that like after the service i was one year playing with with like i was in the also like in this i mean the in the service of like as a job in the military oh, so you, you were in the band yeah like i was i was when i have this military service i was like part of the time with the band but after the service i i like what is like i i got the job like i was like i was also like thinking about the military career as a band player like for the rest of my life like that was one one option yes like like i and it was like i, I i'm not like military kind of guy and when i had all this this uh su suit like when my friends saw me that like they started to laugh because it was something something like difficult to think like like me as a military person and and like they was they were something funny but it was also like funny for me but but some <laughs> it was also it was also like like this kind of I, I have not been in politics, my, but my grandfather was, and he was like in this area, like they, they like quite, quite, he was also like governor of the area mm -hmm. at the end of his life. Like, at, and like this, this was also like something that made some, what is the, I, I mean, some responsibility, like you, you should act in the way as is like supposed to 
Yeah, given given the history of Finland, I feel sure your grandfather went through a lot. Like, like no, he, he was also in the war, but he, he didn't die. But but uh, like it, it's interesting that from the my mother's family, it was like my mother's oldest brother was in the war, but from my father's family was his grandfather. No, no, his father, my grandfather. So, but but it's, somehow this has been like difficult suspects that nobody, that people seldom talk about this, and they have been like this history of violence also because it it was difficult, like after war, that people had to suddenly be like without without the violence that they had had to live yeah. for many years. There's a, um, there's a, a non-dual teacher, a couple of them that comes, comes out of your neck of the woods and uh, comes out of the World War I area. I think uh, I, I want to Google it real quick because I, uh, but geez, could you hang on one second? Let me see if I can Google this real yeah. quick. I'll be right back. Um, Okay. Uh, non dual teachers. Uh, let me see. World War One. Uh, I want to say Oppenheimer. Can you hear me right now? Yes. Okay. I want to say Oppenheimer. Um, he had a, a mad student. Um, oh, I can't believe I've forgotten his name. Uh, World War I, um, non dual teachers, non dual. Let's see, Austrian Hungary, there you go. Okay, uh, was formed in Austrian Hungary. Uh, First World War. Um, okay, dual Americans. Ah, uh, shoot. Well, I feel awful, but I'm not going to be able to. Oh, gosh. I wish I could remember that guy's name. Uh, anyways, they were, they were caught uh, talking about uh, a form of non, uh, non-dualism. Uh, before World War One, and they ended up getting caught up as everybody, as a lot of people did, in that war in the trenches, and um, they went from uh, making armaments to being uh, forced into the service, seeing the trench warfare firsthand, and then being captured, and um, and uh, imprisoned and forced to make armaments for the other side and while you know their people were dying all around them all the time because of starvation in the end nobody had any food and they worked you to death and um they uh, they were talking about the beauty of you know the, the one guy you know he wrote a little bit they didn't they didn't they weren't able to save a, a lot of what they wrote in, in the moment uh, because, of course, you know, you're not allowed to have that kind of thing um, But uh, while they're in the camps. But uh, the guy wrote later on, you know, you, you would see something like a clover up against the post, you know, when you were walking by, going from one place to another and it, you, literally being shocked at seeing something alive and, um, and just in that moment feel this, you know, that this, this sensation of bliss come on by, you know, the, the release of stress of the moment. You're up for days, you know, you're, you haven't eaten in a week and, you know, all of this other, and what you eat is, is horrific. And, um, um, but in that moment, you see, he saw this clover and, uh, and just got lost in it and somehow was sustained by that 
uh, immediate experience of that of that moment. It stayed with him throughout all the immediate experiences of the you know every horrible moment that that he was experiencing. Somehow, some way, this little clover that he saw. Um, it just carried over with him, and no matter what was going on around him, he always um, balanced it out by that euphoria um, of just uh, you know you you see those uh, you see those uh, stories about the, the Zen monks that uh, you know they're, they're asking about enlightenment, and uh, the guy says wash the dish. The guy turns around to wash the dish. He washes the dish, and all of a sudden he's enlightened. You know well. This guy was saying this is the same thing about this clover. He saw a clover and suddenly understood that um, no matter no matter what appears to be happening within the story, the immediate experience of it is exactly as it appears. Don't add anything to it. Don't try to take anything away from it. And uh, that's how he got through a lot of, uh, you know, that's just how he experiences what seems to be uh, this reality. And uh, I always try to take stories like that into account when I feel like I'm suffering or I'm going through pain or, you know, things aren't going the way I want. There's always those stories of people that have gone through so much worse. And um, uh, I, I really do. I, I'll, I'll, I'll link it to you later and I'll, and I'll probably put like a little disclaimer on, on this. If I do post this, I'll say, you know, this is the, the, the author and uh, his student that I was talking about. And I think you'll probably recognize the name, but uh, I love those kind of lessons um, in that, uh, you know, it, that is also the lesson itself is immediate experience. So, you know, if, if, if I can hear the stories of these horrors and hope that I never have to go through them, um, that right now is the totality of what appears to be. And, um, you know, so you have the brutality of possibility and the actuality of what is. And uh, I don't know, um, I think more often than not, we're actually talking about the fear of going through what seems to be a world that suffers rather than actually being in a suffering world. Do you know what I mean? Yes, there was some problem with the microphone, but I, but but I, yeah, I, I got it. There is, it's like that, and it's also like I, 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 like some words are like maybe good for somebody, and some words are not good for somebody. I mean, like if somebody is saying like nothing matters. Uh, so it, it somehow it, it doesn't it it doesn't ring a bell in 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 me like somehow I like it in the way like it's everything is like storytelling but it, it I, I would rather say that not, nothing does matter and nothing doesn't matter or something like that in the way I like, that it, I it's like yeah, it's it's like real and unreal, and like so, somehow everything matters, and somehow nothing matters. Yeah, that, that that's the beauty of nothing matters. You can take that double negative and say, yes, everything is nothing, but nothing matters. You know, but because yeah, yeah. is the double negative of everything is nothing, so yeah. nothing does matter. <laughs> but yeah, and 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 it's true. Yeah, I agree with you. You know that there are different styles and different uh, different. Uh, uh, different ways of, of doing this. And, uh, you know, the, the hardcore, you know, there is no me kind of thing. Um, you know, there, yeah, that's, there, there is a place for that. And I love that very much. And it's true and it's good and it's and all of that. But it's not necessarily something I got to hear um, all the time. The immediate experience is for, for me, it, it's already understood that uh, this is not, an individual experiencing uh, something outside of itself. And this is not two people having a conversation, but rather the expression of such. And uh, we are not separate 
and this moment, you know, is not really a present tense. And uh, you know, the all all of what appears to be here and now seems, you know, with all the talk of the sorrow and everything. There's there's also, you know, two relatively um I don't know, I think I, I'm a pretty happy guy. You know, I, I like um I like I like being alive. I like or the, the you know what what seems like life here. I like this. I like it because I love the paradox of it. And um, you know, it it, it seems of it's it seems that there's no real way for me to tell so many things. You know, there, there's there's so many things that just can't be known. Um, it just can't be said. You know, you can't you can't speak accurately about anything, really, and because um, there are no things. You know, it's it's just so paradoxical. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't see uh, personally uh, going into a, a linguistic lesson about you know first person pronouns. You know, saying yes or saying I exist or I don't exist or or saying there is no me or correcting people about their you know the way they uh, the way they're talking about the appearance. There's we have to use language. You know, I'm not we're not in an English class. You know, it's uh, you know we're <laughs> we're not here trying to figure out how, you know how to speak uh, uh, much much like the curriculum and and the students. You know, the the language can change per conversation. The story is the nuance of what we are saying. Whereas um, language in, in so far as uh, class and uh, using definitions of words um, is an entirely different, you know, entirely different class altogether. It's an entirely different subject. Um, there's no need to, um, to go over on a blanket statement, there is no me, and then try to work around those first person pronouns. Whereas we can just allude to what appears to be happening with stories. And uh, as far as as far as I know, that's been the Viking way <laughs> forever. You guys, uh, I think, what was it? Uh, I've heard that uh, the Vikings of old, uh, the best thing, that can happen to you is that people tell stories about you because it's kind of a way of of living um, after you're gone you know after you're dead it's it's a way of a, a form of immortality or, or living past your years and so yeah. and actually yeah. actually we have like there is little there is also have been like some vikings in finland but actually we have like own stories it's the kalevala is the finnish storytelling book it, it's a little bit different they, though it's like there is like uh, no, 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 it, it's it's the like Finnish moods in in there and there there used to be like three main character like one was like Väinämöinen who was representing the wisdom and the uh, the other one was uh Seppo Ilmarinen, who was the smith and it was representing the skills. And the third one was the this uh, Lemminkäni, who was like the warrior, warrior type. And they say that like, it differentiates with the usual, this, this, uh, what is the usual uh, story, stories of the nations that the, the third type of the people the the warrior type is is like comes from the it, it's just like third like first is the wisdom and second is the skill and the third one is the this what is the i mean the courage and the, this guy with the courage was a little bit stupid also that it's it's made a little bit fun for for him but but some these stories are like interesting, and they are making like like really religions are also like moods and stories. And if you if you go like like then you don't have to. And politics are also like just storytelling. And 
if you then you get a little bit distance for the stories and you don't take them so seriously anymore like that also helps helps living and make it a little bit lighter and if somebody is saying something it's just storytelling and also like in some way this non-duality is also in some way storytelling they they might might be some people who are like in some way liberated and they don't have the sense of the self but but that is also like storytelling as long as it, it maybe happens to apparent you or doesn't happen yeah i think it's a, it, the the funny thing about the loss of self is that i think it's you know people misunderstand what that means i mean you still you're still the character of, of you you know it's just that 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 reality or tether to a a you know material world has dissipated you know there's no it's it's just you know the 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 lack of uh, uh autonomy you know but the but the self still seems to exist it just doesn't exist as it appears and uh i find it beautiful that um there are so many people in our history that uh that seem so prevalent but we don't know whether they actually existed or not you know uh, the buddha you know could have existed you know between you know, in a 600 year period, you know, he might have been in, in there somewhere. <laughs> it's like, okay, Jesus, or uh, it just, there's just so many, so many different uh, Socrates, you know, we, we attribute uh, Confucius with, you know, just, there's just so many different teachers that um or, or or big personalities that uh that so much is attributed to but we don't really actually know if they existed or if they're just stories and um yeah i think that's I, that's indicative of of non-duality i think a lot of uh a lot of what of what we talk about um is based in absolutely no foundation whatsoever and that's kind of a play on words but it all is it, like everyone every com conversation must have its own subtle nuance of language because it's just it, it it's just a consequence of uh what appear to be individuals you know what we think and, and how we use our language all right have, have you cut out yeah i don't know was some some problem with the mic, but it it I I, I heard everything and and yeah yes yes and and uh, I the, somebody may be somebody else may be saying that this this communication has been around somebody could say like maybe like thousands of years and somebody say that it has been just like maybe twenty or thirty years. But it, I, I don't, I, I don't like in that way to be radical because there is, I can, cannot say anything about that. Yeah, it, it, it's nothing. also just, it's also a, just, a, just a story. But it's nice, nice that in nowadays there is, so this has become like com more common thing, like also because of this zoom and these these things and also it's one that there is more more openness that in the they say that the, it was this one philosophy this spinoza baruch spinoza that yeah spinoza he was is good talking, yeah like he, he was talking something like like something similar maybe like he, he was talking about like panthe pantheism like everything is seeing the, the the one but but in his area like he didn't publish anything of that because because he was afraid that what the church will do to him schopenhauer i believe i think he was influenced by schopenhauer was he not i i think sure. it, it it went spinoza was like i think there was 
Descartes, Descartes and, and Spinoza was like after that and he, he made it like more uh, more like uh, radical in the way somehow but I'm, I'm not that that much in philosophy but but it's in, interesting that this kind of this ha- has been and also in like in the east maybe more but but it's it, it's the whole different thing like when you start to like read these old books and and trying to like then you get easily like lost in those words because those words were, were in those times and also like even in our land which we have talked about like how there is some challenges with the language like because there is it, it because language is mainly based in nuance like naming things and 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 the reality is more like process like more like verb verb like thing like well, I, i love i love the uh you know that personally i don't think there's you know that I think the old stuff is the same as the new stuff. It's just the old stuff had different stories. Um, what they're ba- what, what the old stuff to me says is that it's not even there is no old or new. It seems like time and space, but it's not. It's not like there was a teacher that existed, you know. It, you know, and I and I and I know I, I like the thing with, that I just did with the with the uh, with the other teachers that we don't know whether they or not they existed within time and space what i'm saying with 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 everything essentially nothing appears uh, or nothing is in time and space it just appears to have been it appears as if people thousands of years ago were saying the same thing that they're saying now only in a different way with different words and different different nuance so yeah i did you know the beauty of it is is like with 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 buddha there was no buddha um Or there is no Socrates or Jesus or anything like that. Um, there just appears to be within this immediate experience. And all of these teachers culminate, uh, or, or these people culminate their, their writings. And it's not that they existed then, wrote this stuff, and am now I am reading it and, and absorbing it. It is the story of that. And everything appears to be the story of time and space. It's the story of an individual navigating a dimension. And so it's not so much that, uh, you know, we are moving through space in a linear chain of events known as immediate experience. It's that immediate experience is the totality and pictures of a story of time and space kind of run through it. And, you know, we as objects within it. Um, So and, and much like a book, or a movie you can the book exists in its totality or wherever you pick it up you can open up the book anywhere you want whether it be the beginning or the end and you know you can put it on the shelf and not look at it all of i think that is more close you know to what is happening but then again it's both you know it it, it is and it isn't rolling through a linear chain of events in time and space and it isn't it's it's both and um it's it's almost like trying to say you know two things are juxtaposed running you know running uh alongside of each other forever at a 90 degree angle <laughs> you know what i mean it really is that paradoxical to where you can't really it's impossible to say both things are happening at the same time you know that there is that we're eternally at a crossroad and that the point of the crossroad and then those two places never meet and we are there always and that can never happen simultaneously and it seems like that is you know kind of how you you have to use language to to somehow illustrate those those two happening simultaneously and it's 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 very it's very difficult but i love doing it i love speaking about non-duality because you can't really speak of it directly at all 
and but you can only tell stories and have these finer, subtler nuances that um, you know you can go through hours of conversation, complete mundane, and then come up with something that somehow resonates with someone. It you know in that you know uh, something as simple as that. You know the uh, the uh, juxtaposed lines and the uh, crossroads at a 90 degree angle happening simultaneously. That's, it's, it's, it's that paradoxical. It's, it's that it's impossible all, to talk about. Yeah. It's also interesting in like some in Sufi, Sufi poetry and Sufi mystics, there are some interesting, interesting, like, like they are like also because it's poetry, then it, it, it doesn't have to be like streak. It can be like poetic in the way. And, yeah, and it, also, it, yeah. Please and go you, ahead. You, please. Yeah, no, it's it like, uh, but, but it's interesting that also it, it doesn't matter even like which, which religion, if, if, if you are like open to the, we have some, sometimes say it like open to the sourceless source like yes. with, with like but it, yeah no that maybe not not not, not, not nothing nothing more comes now <laughs> well, well the, 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 the beautiful thing about the sourceless source i, I love that and I agree with that. That's what I really think is, you know, the sourceless source. You know, I think that's really close to being able to describe it as both sourceless and the source of. So, but um, the the the, the Faz and uh, all of that kind of uh, the Sufism, um, you know, based in the, like the Muslim prophet and uh, you know some a lot of that stuff. Uh, based in a god, you know, and you can use any poet that that uses words like God, and there are, are just somehow this, um, you know, they're not right or wrong, you know, in, in that in that respect. And the, like, I don't think a god is a deity um, because I don't because there are no, you know, I don't think a god is a thing. But I don't think this is a thing. There's no god and something to be a god of. Um, and in that respect, you can call this God and whatever, you, you know, whatever this is, you could say it's God, but it's the God of nothing. You could say that you are God as well, because you are a part of what appears to be happening. And in that respect, because there's no separation, then you are God too. But what are you the God of, you know, what, and um, if there is no separation, what, you know, what, what are you meeting in the field? You know, because that's a big one of Hafaz. What is it? Hafaz, uh, the the one poet, um, he's always talking about meeting and, you know, I will meet you there. And um, he's referring a God that will be revealed somehow. And um, it's an interesting, I, I love it because, um, you know, uh, it's it's talking about something poetic and beautiful in the future um, or in some in some other moment but um, I, what I find is that uh, the the word or the the subject of deity comes up um, throughout my life and at points I realize you know it, it's almost as if this you know, thinglessness, you know, isn't a God, but it, but it likes to, uh, it likes, it likes to play itself out as, as people are, are you know, discussing what it could be, you know, I mean, because it's, it's constantly like that. I mean, my, my life has been, you know, just completely riddled with discussion of, of, of deities and, uh, you know, whether or not they exist and what could it be and what is this and um, you know uh, all of that kind of stuff pantheism Christianity you know uh, uh, just all of the Buddhism every all of it and um, it's funny to me that uh, if you look at it as immediate experience uh, being the totality of, of, of 
existence. Then, um, and you look at the the apparent memory of the individual. Uh, think about all the different times that you were in a situation where you were talking about God or talking about you know the validity of God, whether or not it, there is a God, whether you know or what God is, and uh, what is not God. If there is a God, what is not God? You know, and um, you know it's just that spontaneous nature of of this thinglessness expressing itself as an immediate experience in a dimension of time and space it i think it, it it's almost playful in this respect that it's because it's impossible to to you know there's no way to know or to answer and and it's just god itself as i came you know, I, I started to really like to say, and for years I would say it's the wrong question. The, the question of God is the incorrect because, the, you know, there is nothing to be a God of and nothing, you know, that is not God. So it's kind of both and neither at the same time. You know, there's no, you know, there's, it's just the wrong question altogether. <laughs> and I think a lot, I think a lot of uh, things that up here, within that kind of linear framework of reference, you know, that you're traveling as an individual through the dimension of time and space. You have this, you know, you have this, uh, or people, you know, people will have this uh, idea that they're separate from what they are observing and uh, moving through time. And it's, it's just not that way. And uh, it's impossible to discuss, but, um, it's impossible to say that um, accurately, you know, because you're saying essentially that words don't exist as you're speaking, you know, but they don't because, you know, the words don't exist as they appear. And, um, you know, they cannot reference um, that uh, actuality because actuality is not duplicitous and it's, it's just impossible. Um, it's impossible to be accurate. And so people will use words like God and um, come up with all kinds of brilliant, beautiful stories. And uh, there's all kinds of, you know, experiences that people go through and uh, they, they all attach some kind of uh, what they know to be true to it. But, uh, and you, you know it, you got to be careful with people like that because or with the with with that kind of individual that still is absolutely certain what i am experiencing is real you know what what i experience is true it's real it's it, it happened you know this is true this is going to be you know this you know the end of the world will be in 2001 you know what I mean? Or, or you know, whatever it is. Every five years is a new date out at the end of the world. And somebody, you know, somebody, you know, found a new code or a God talked to them or something like this. And, um, yeah, you always got to move that date back. Um, but that is part of the story of, uh, you know, of, of, of neutrality insofar as language. Um, because there's no position to defend and there's no position to attack in that I can, I can say a bunch of things um, about why things aren't true, but I cannot, I, I can't verify what I'm saying to be true personally. So like, I can't defend a position after tearing down why positions are positionless, why there is no foundation. So I can't build a foundation on the foundation less. And so in, in language is generally most effective when you are making a point or defending a point or attacking uh, a previous assertion, you know, but you can't really do any of that when you're talking about um, non-duality. And um, because wrong is right, wrong is, you know, non-existence is existence. There is no non-existence. We have no, you know, we have no off. 
You know, you can't say that this is on because there's no off. And you can't say that something is dead because there's no, we, we have only stories of it. We, we can't know that. You can't know anything about death or what happened prior to life, or if there is a prior or a post, just like there is no before now or after now, you know, just like there's no other than this. And um, it's, it's amazing. They, they, they used to be this, like these old, old techniques also, like this neti neti, that if you say like, is it this or that? No, it's not. The, it, it isn't this, but it isn't also neither neither this or neither that, but it's also a technique like it, it's somehow it, it somehow gets you to the point that you you see that there is nothing like there is nothing and nothing is happening and there is no one and nothing is happening, but it's also a technique and it can also be like artificial or, or it, it's not the answer to the it's it, no it's one way to tell a story one way to communicate but it's it's not the only right way but well i mean yeah the, the, the story it, it may have you know it, it may be nothing but no thing and nothing are, are not necessarily the same thing. Nothing is not necessarily no thing, and no thing is not necessarily nothing within the parameters of language. So, you know, no hyphen thing and nothing, you know, you can get, those are two different subjects, you know? So language can be difficult. <laughs> it's just, it never ends in so far as the difficulties when speaking of stuff like this, because you're, you're fading in and out of telling the story of the time and space, a, a, story, a story within you know, the appearance of time and space and referring to no thing as you know, what, is, what is or what is not is. And you can get into these conversations where you know, it literally it just sounds like, a, you know, it's just uh, like UG would say, a dog barking and uh, you know, birds chirping in trees. But uh, still, even the dog barking of the bird chirping in the tree is what is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I agree with you in, in, in so far as uh, uh, immediate experience and the story of time and space seem to be, um, for uh, however irrelevant to the totality as far as like your story doesn't actually exist. Uh, tethered to any any reality, but the reality is the story. You know, the story itself is in itself, in as it is the heartbreaker. And to tell somebody that what they're experiencing, even as a character within a story, doesn't mean anything, um, is you know, it doesn't. It doesn't. You know, it definitely means something to that character. You know what I mean? And so. And if you are going to blow off a character or if you're going to blow off the feelings of someone who doesn't mean anything, like, okay, fine. I don't mean anything. I, I understand that this isn't real and I'm in an appearance of an individual. Well, and that when I leave your immediate experience, I don't even exist, right? So, but in so far as me meeting someone that is completely, I'm inconsequential and they are inconsequential. Okay, but they're in pain, and I hold out an olive branch and try to help that person um, because they're in pain, not because it means something, but because it, the appearance is the story, and the story is the meaning, and there is no need for a foundation to be built on that intention that I, as a wisp in a wind, you know, will help another molecule that is just floundering around for its own sake, for the appearance of such. It does not have to mean anything in a reality to try to help someone or to try to, uh, or to, to seek, you know, to, to seek to, uh, you know, bring a smile out of somebody who may not be feeling all that well. You know, uh, that's... Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. I also like 
Yeah, it, I also like there is. I also like what the Shakespeare said. Like the whole world is a stage. Like so, yeah. somehow, like it. It's all. Everything is like storytelling, and like whole world is a stage. That is also like in the light way to take it. Like then, it, it's somehow like easy and a playful way to ap approach the thing like it, yeah. it's it's just a state yeah and and like uh, richard bach would say have you ever heard of richard bach illusions jonathan livingston siegel bridge across forever one he's uh, a good author yeah yeah uh, I, yes yeah I have I haven't maybe read, but I I know know the time. Well, he would say he would say that uh, I wouldn't call him a non-dualist, but he's definitely got he speaks on things along this line, and he'll say uh, he, he would say uh, you know when you go into a movie or when you see a play within the play, you know, and uh, we're watching Shakespeare, we're watching Hamlet. I mean, you're you're getting involved with the story. You you are actually feeling the the despair and the hopelessness, the fear and the trauma, the comedy. You laugh, you cry. You know, I mean, when you're in the when you're in the movie theater, when you're watching a play, you can get caught up in it. You know, so it's not that you know, as as we uh, appearances um, uh, may not have a foundation in a reality. It's just it sure does seem to hurt sometimes and it sure does seem to uh you know uh you know benefit and 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 the, you know and then be a waste of it's frustrating everything that you feel is real enough in that um you know it's even more beautiful that people know can quote unquote uh you know paradoxically know this that none of this is actual and that we're not actually doing something is 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 different it's it's a slightly different message from you know from yeah we understand that it's not real and that we're not actually doing it however it's beautiful when we appear to help each other for its own sake because of the you know it, it's not that i you know that i can say i have a free will but yet freely i say that i want to make someone feel good rather than than you know crush them when they're down you know i i want i would rather help somebody than harm them you know and uh i would rather make somebody laugh and smile and feel good and warm rather than you know rather than the opposite of that and um you know i wish well for everyone and i hate it when people go through pain you know i want to i want to leave that when i can um and you know a hardcore core non-dualists will say well yeah that just appears to be happening well yes but that's a, a separate issue you know the, it's a separate issue i know it just appears to be happening but within the appearance of it you know there is the want or the happiness of that appearance you know actually playing itself out um, because i might not appear or i might not have a free will but i appear to and so i do like the the pointers of the of a lot of the uh, unconditional non-dualists, you know, uh, Tony Parsons and that kind of teaching um, and the lack of me and all that. But it is slightly um, different than a storytelling and um, and just uh, going going with that uh, that immediate experience as a story and we telling stories within it. So it's a story within a story, a dream within a dream, a thought within a thought, all without foundation, but also predicated on the assumption that most people in the room already understand that there is no me, there is no self, there is no one doing anything. And this is just the story of such. Yes, but we, we yeah. can have fun with that. You know, it doesn't have to yeah. be a bad thing. <laughs> it's not. It's, yeah, that, I mean, it can be exciting and fun. You know. <laughs> yeah, and it, it's one interesting sub subject. It's also like dreams. Like in in some tribes in 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 Amazon, they have this. I, I'm not. I'm not 
I'm not I'm not very uh, knowing it very well, but some I, I have read that some tribes in Amazon that they they had this idea like this dream world, like the dreams were were like more true to them that like the non non dreams. Like in in dream, you cannot lie and cannot uh, be, be be like. In in dream you cannot uh, have this uh, like like let, they are more in in dream you are like more more in the truth than in the non dream because you cannot lie to the dream in in the way you cannot lie to your yourself somehow. Well, thought and self merge, and um, that is kind of what dreaming is, in my humble opinion. Thought and self merge. Now you could do this in your waking life as well, uh, and you and 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 separation will dissipate. I mean, the appearance or the illusion that you are separate from what you are observing will dissipate. Thought and self, in, in, as a singular motion, that is what dreaming is. And because you can't lie to yourself, you know that implies that you are separate from your thought, and so thought and self you, the, the mind is telling a story to itself about a physicality a brain and that body that that goes through time and space without the the object of verification of it you know and there's that separation that loop mind self brain mind self brain that cannot be said to be tethered in any kind of reality of, you know, because it's just a loop and there's, you, you know, we, we cannot know that a physical brain actually exists in time and space, just as we can't know that this is a simulation or if it is uh, a quantum fluctuation, as Boltzmann, Boltzmann would say, or as uh, uh, Descartes would say, we're connected to our uh, penile gland in our brain, which is totally untrue and, and you know, just that's been debunked for a long time. But uh, the point being is, is that you can't know if your brain is in a vat or if it's quantum fluctuation or a computer program. And if you cannot know the source of your thought, okay, then you cannot know that your perception is accurate about reality and that if reality is actually happening at all, okay? So in this respect, the illusion of the self as it is separate from the thought merging there's no lying in it and that is dreaming you know usually the, the within the characters sleeping dreams okay but the characters awaken you know can uh, paradoxically appear to merge their thought with their self even though the thought and the self don't exist in a foundational reality um but they appear to and so the thought within the thought can merge the self that appears to be thinking <laughs> it's it, I mean, it's fun but that is never label what appears to be happening with any word because then it can be attacked the moment you label something you can attack it so like if i say thought appears to arise with a thinker in it like we are a spontaneous and sourceless thought arising in, in immediate experience. We appear to be separate people. We appear to be having two different intellects in time and space. We have two different stories. We live two different lives, but that is the illusion um, of thinkers. We think we think, but no, in fact, we are, we are thoughts that think we think and within that immediate experience, uh, we try to find our foundations, but can't because we are not, we are not derived from the reality we appear to be, uh, we, we appear to have been thought of. So we are actually being expressed rather than being able to express ourselves. And in the same way, thought and self in this paradoxical way can merge and now you have a dream within a dream within a dream or a waking dream within a dream. And 
the the idea that you are separate from all the rest of the story completely dissipates because you you are just like everything else are there different characteristics of thought sure but can you say that there is separation in the thought like you have a thought of a picture of the vacation like when you slid down you know a big water slide or something okay well the water slide you have you you the thought itself of the memory of the water slide and you sliding down it are a singular kind of uh medium whereas you know while you were going down the slide it felt like you were separate from the slide well the memory the memory of it is now the entirety of the of that moment so uh, yeah but as soon as you say as soon as i said there are, I, I i mentioned thought thought arises with a self in it that thinks it thinks well now people will say well then where does that thought come from well it's spontaneous and it's sourceless it doesn't come from anywhere it's not going to anything time doesn't go anywhere you know space isn't going anywhere immediate experience is not relative to another position okay this is the totality so whatever is within it uh or what appears to be happening as it is it it's so but within that paradoxically we have things like the enlightenment story and i believe that this is akin to that enlightenment story in that you can't explain it because it's not having to do with time and space it's not having to do with matter and motion or cause or effect it has nothing to do with what appears to be the mundane regularity of life it, in that the enlightenment story has to do with the merging of what the individual perceives as their thought and the individual itself realizing that the individual is the thought and what the individual is perceiving is an extension of that expression and you realize that you are now no longer expressing anything but you are an expression and so um and in that foundationless way knowing that you are not real and whatever you're seeing is also an extension of an expression from sourcelessness and spontaneousness going to nothing for no reason meaning or purpose that can be attributed in any way to to the story of the character we think that there that meaning reason and purpose actually has some kind of validity but no in the meaninglessness and the reasonlessness and the purposelessness of that expression within an expression, we still seem to want to be cordial, cordial to each other, nice to each other. We want to tell stories and and have fun and 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 be kind and nice and and not have to um, constantly, you know, worry about our friends, you know, uh, tearing us down for one reason or another, because we used a me or an I, or a we, you know, I, I used a personal pronoun where I shouldn't have done that. And now somehow I don't know what I'm talking about. I mean, it, it's not an English class, you know, <laughs> it, it's just, it's not a language class. It's a nuance about what might be. And, you know, I think, I, you know, I, I think it's um, it's more it's more like being expressed rather than or you know it's not you it, you're expressed as a as a thinker that thinks rather than actually a, 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 an individual that thinks and there's a lot of a lot of things that point to that you know within the story of time and space and an individual there's a lot of reasons why you can say that that may be more true than false in that simply you cannot know the source of your thought and that's yeah that, like that is the realization that's the reality of the expression you can't know it so yeah like, like the golden rule is quite like it it makes like there is seven over seven billion people like seven and a half billion people and the more and more are, are coming so golden rule is quite useful like if you like to 
uh, not to have uh, too much arguments with but but some but it's also like some characters they they need the arguments like to to have the feeling of being like alive or something like like that yeah the the argument you know to to yeah i i, I agree in in that people need to feel as if they are protecting a position in order to feel as if they are more real um they they feel more relevant if they are defending something that they believe to be true and um it, it's it's another loop that uh strengthens itself and um you know a lot you know when, when you realize that none of this is really you know it, it's not as it appears and the foundation is the foundation less like i can't attack um a position because whatever position you're taking does appear to be real okay but it's all an appearance you know it, it, I, i could say it is and it isn't you know and that might not be satisfactory to somebody who actually believes that they exist in time and space and matter and motion moves and cause and effect is real and there there must be a source you know and all of that kind of thing energy exists you know the universe is actual all of that stuff well it is and it isn't you know it, it you know and and i find that um the pleasant disposition that comes with that understanding quote unquote paradoxical understanding is that um it, you know i think people can be drawn to it sometimes there are some sometimes when people find that kind of equilibrium pleasant enough that you know uh, just a smile is worth is 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 worth it you know just just to have a pleasant conversation is worth it. We don't have to, I don't have to, you know, convince you of anything. And you don't have to believe what I'm saying. And you don't have and I don't have to believe what you're saying. But we can talk to each other and build on each other's subtle nuances. You know, we can we can expand on that which cannot be spoken of in a collaborative sense. And the two of us can appear to be two people that merge of a mind. Or emerge of an idea and build on that fascination, you know, like, you know, because it's a trick of the light. It's the trick of the sound that when the language that we create be between the two of us might not be um, shareable, or or it might not be expressible in another conversation. And that subtle nuance of what can't be spoken of, that magic moment where we both go. Ah, you know it just move move the needle just a little more about what can't be said and it might take you know i mean it takes a while sometimes and sometimes it doesn't at all sometimes it's just bam and um it's like wow did you see that you know you, you know, and it's just beautiful but i think it has a lot to do with um the pliability of of your own your own found lack of foundation that you realize that you're really not sitting on anything solid you know and that's that's your foundation the lucidity or the the, the lack of a, of a position to to defend um and that could that could that literally turns out to be a weapon uh, in debate um even if you don't even know you're in a debate i mean you don't want to be in an argument but suddenly you're in an argument because you know somebody's angry because you can't confirm nor deny what they are claiming and then when you when you try to explain well why i can't confirm or deny it they get even more angry and then they start telling you why you're wrong and you get caught up in an argument where suddenly you feel like you're you know you're attacking his position you're defending your position and it's like this and that's what conversation can do um and, and you know conversely i think what we're trying to do and uh i think what and i and i'm so grateful for it is that um we're trying to see where conversation can go and 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 where it can expand on the already um beautiful discussion of non-duality and 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 how it appears in many instances to be dualistic 
<laughs> and vice versa. <laughs> but uh, I, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's been two hours. It's been about two hours. Mike, uh, Mika, yeah. do you want to? Uh, is there is some parting word? Would you like to say something in parting, and then we can set up another time for another discussion? No, I don't know. Uh, there was some idea. I was uh, no. It's it's just like uh, not 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 anything clear, but it's it has been fun and and the the way of um, I mean it's it's also like this is. This non-dual thing is because it's quite rare communication still. It's also, I like the feeling of kind of tribe or herd. Like there is like this kind of thing where you, that you, you can share this, this uh, observation. And some, somehow it's also like then you, you don't maybe don't have that much need to tell it to the people who are not like open to to hear it or something like I'm not saying that I, I'm completely open to hear it but but somehow for many people this would be just in, insane talking like nothing well the, the, like com completely completely like unpractical and just you could say that just it, it's just a mystery and completely like um unpractical but it's also it can be just like for fun well and and, and it's, uh, there's something that i lost in, in my yammerings was um it is like you know the the it's insane it's it's completely bonkers what what's being suggested so uh, to most people, you know, yeah. and the funny part about that is, is even if you believe in space and time, uh, the the reality is is that sanity equals insanity plus peer acceptance plus time, you know, community acceptance plus time. So, you know. In you know, just because everybody thinks it, and over time it has been the program, then everybody thinks it's sane. You know, that's sanity. Sanity is when everybody agrees that people um, or that the universe exists as a linear chain of events. But that's not necessarily um, so easily. You, you can't you can't demonstrate that to be um, objectively true. It's just not that way. If you see it for not the, like people say live in the now, but there is no now. We, we have no example of now because even if you think that you exist within time and space, that would mean that your brain would have to process um, time uh, instantaneously as it would information within that moment. So as you're looking at the stars and all the light is hitting you and information is hitting you from different parts of the universe, your brain would have to, and nervous system would have to uh, process that and kick it out in a smooth, um, smooth as it seems smooth. We appear to be going through time and space smoothly. But in fact, if we did exist in time and space and your brain was processing actual time, then you would be seeing some parts moving slow, some parts moving fast, some would be blank, some would be lighter, brighter, other things. There would be all kinds of weird stuff happening. Um, but your brain cannot process information instantaneously. So, I mean, that's just the rules of relativity. If you think that you are in the universe of relativity, then you must accept that your brain you must accept that your brain is the source of your information. Now, if, if it is, then it must be processing either slightly before actuality or slightly after actuality. And then you must say, now your brain is deciding how to filter what is actual time to you in a kind of a collage. It, it, 
pieces all of this information together and creates this smooth running tale of a reality. Now, if that is true, and your brain is not giving you actual real time information, and it's either slightly before or slightly after, then how do you know that it's giving you real information at all? See, the thing is, is that even if you believe the story of space and time, you cannot prove it. You cannot say that you know that this is actual reality or actuality because your brain doesn't process now. You as a self have never experienced now. You experience a rendition of what your brain experiences in a collage of nows in a thousand million different nows every second every every plank time so every plank time there is a million different things that your brain has condensed into my hand or you know whatever it seems to be happening and that seems to be normal running live in the now moment uh, one after another in uh, a succession of events. But that is the difference between knowing the source of your thought and believing what you're being told as a self. And whether you exist within this time and space is predicated on that assumption that your brain is, it, is the source of your thought and perception and is feeding you an actual reality. But you can't know it ever and that is the loop of self or mind self brain the mind tells the self about a physical brain that is the source but can't but, but can't uh, uh uh how can i say this um um validate the claim can't you cannot um present the brain as an objective truth in order to make that true. And then even if you believe it, you say, okay, I'm holding my brain in my hand, you know, but it doesn't have any feeling. It doesn't have any, it's bring it's all of these things, the nervous system and all these things that appear to be you are not you because you, for one, uh, you can't know that what the brain is feeding. Is, I, I just lost my train, but for, for example, because I can't know what purple is to you or what strawberries taste like um, to you, okay? We can't share sensation. So even if I'm sitting here holding my brain in my hand and I'm saying, see, this is my brain and this is, I know it, but you are not the object of your brain because you're, you know, there's no part there that says, well, this is where strawberries taste like this. And this is where, you know, apples taste like that or, ginger smells like such and such or this is here's your memory now none of that exists within that organ so and i could not share that to you and you couldn't accept it as an object of truth and i can't accept it as an object of truth because it's as, it's as if it's another object it is the self the mind and the brain are three different things culminating in what appears to be a self but it's just a story and that can't be um uh, presented as an object of truth. And so from there, whether or not you want to believe that this is an approximation or if this is absolutely completely uh, a clue as to why this is not a reality because you can't, because nobody ever has been able to, to, uh, to objectively verify what appears to be happening to be actual from the beginning of of humanity, if you want to believe in that, to the end of time. No human will ever be able to know whether what they're experiencing is objectively real. And so um, some people might say that that's not practical. And I beg to differ with, I, I, I beg to differ with that story because uh, would you say to somebody that lived in a million years, or would you say to somebody that lived a hundred thousand years ago, within the story of time and space that it's not practical that you don't know that what your experience is is objectively real i would beg i would argue i would argue the the opposite and that um it is essential that to the to the peace of humanity to the peace of the world as it appears 
that none of this can be objectively verified and that we cannot know that it's real. And so take a step back before you, you know, plant a flag in something and say, um, I'm going to fight for this or that or the other, or I'm going to kill myself because this is too real and it's too, it's too much and I can't take it, or uh, I'm not living up to somebody, or, you know, it's too much pain, or whatever it may be. Uh, I think that, or I think, I think, that in reality, the lack of foundation is far more healthy to uh, realize and to say, wow, we don't have to be so serious. But yet, isn't it amazing that we can seem to play with this medium of existence and make rockets go to the moon and satellites and cell phones and all this other kind of stuff? We can play with experimental reality, but we can never know that it is objectively real. It doesn't mean that you know you have to go to a cave somewhere and never speak again. Not at all. You can play with what appears. But just know that it's an appearance. And in that way, loosen up you know, your grip on, you know, or, or it doesn't really even matter, but it's the truth. It's not, whether it's practical or not, is not relevant to whether or not you want to understand truth. To, to, you know, you know what I mean? And in, in, in this way, I think that the people that don't even believe that there are individuals um, actually have the greater health of individual, the appearance of individuals in mind, because we are talking about actuality. We're talking about truth, not what might be, but what actually is. And what actually is, is that we have no foundation in a reality, but this is why, and this is how, you know, that your foundation is incorrect. And to base anything on it is a, is, is a path to pain, where there doesn't have to be any. You know, you don't have to get so caught up in the story that um, you make a rash and ridiculous decision, um, regardless of the foundation nature, foundationless nature of of your existence, in that you are not real as you might have just thought you you were, but real enough in that, yeah, you're a character in a story, but that's real enough. It's real enough that disappears here now. And in this moment, we have this amazing, an incredible story that we're in. And it is just, that is beautiful enough. You don't have to, you don't need anything else. There is nothing more. And in that respect, it's more beautiful because it's the truth. It's, a, or it's, it's more true. You know, I mean, or, you know, it's, you know what I mean? I mean, it's, you know, even true and false, though that might not be, but I can negate your claim of a reality. So it's true that your reality is not verified. So that's what I mean by truth. I, mean, I cannot tell you what an ultimate truth is, but I can tell you what is lacking in so far as objective reality. And that would be that you exist as an individual going through a time and a place um, that is not, that's not actual. You can't know that. And in fact, there's, you know, I mean, dozens, if not hundreds of, of, of ways to express that, to, to show you. But for me, it's the brain in time and space. If you cannot know that the source of your thought actually exists within that medium, then you cannot know that what you are is, experiencing is reality. And um, you have to believe that story. And once you can go beyond that, uh, once you can, once that, sh that foundation is kind of shifted or shooken a little bit, then from there, um, everything is a story. And I find it to be far more relaxing and far more less. I mean, you, there's no more responsibility, you know, and that might scare a lot of people, but that's the reality. You're not thinking, you're being thought, you're being expressed. And um, 
just love it for what it is and realize that, um, you know, it, uh, you know, the weight of the world is not on your shoulders. The world doesn't even really exist. Um, but it appears to, and isn't it beautiful, you know, for the most part, I'll take it over extermination. <laughs> okay. That's good. Good. Where do you stop this time? Yeah. I, I, good uh, last verse. Yeah. I appreciate it, man. I hope I didn't talk too much, man. Um, but I think, thank you so much for helping me uh, get to, get, thanks for telling stories with me today, Mika. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. let, thank let, you, let, let, Let's be in touch. Bye. Yeah, talk to you later. Thanks.